One morning in 1833, in Kent, England, a prosperous 80-year-old farmer named George Bottle sat down to have his breakfast, coffee and toast, prepared by the maid. The maid then reboiled the coffee grounds and prepared more coffee for two relatives and a servant. After their breakfast, the maid gave the grounds to the cleaning lady, called a charwoman in England, who brought them to her daughter's house to boil for a third time so that the daughter and her seven children could have a hot drink. Meanwhile, everyone in George Bottle's household who had had the coffee got sick with vomiting and diarrhea. George Bottle himself got so sick, he died. The police were called. Tests were done. Traces of arsenic were found in the coffee pot. Arsenic is an element that occurs naturally in the Earth's crust, but in white powdered form, it was used for things like rat poison. In 1833, it was super easy to find and inexpensive to purchase. There were plenty of people who could have poisoned the coffee, but eventually suspicion fell on Bottle's 20-something grandson, John. He was arrested. A chemist named James Marsh was unable to convince the jury that the cause of death was definitely poisoned by arsenic. The tests available at the time were complicated and inconclusive. The grandson was set free. Three years later, he confessed to the murder, but by that point it was too late to retry him. Why do I bother to tell you about this fairly run-of-the-mill poisoning case? Two reasons. The unreliability of tests at the time made James Marsh so mad he decided he was going to go invent a better method. Here's the second reason. This case gives us a really fascinating look at everyday life in the 1830s. Coffee was so expensive it was kept under lock and key at the house. That charwoman's daughter and her seven children were drinking nasty, reboiled coffee every morning. Think about that next time you sit down to your breakfast.